What's up, fasters? Welcome to another video on fasting and intermittent fasting and other kind of fasting videos that we talk about. I am Dr. Legrand, and if this is your first time on our channel and you have not subscribed to our channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you don't miss any of their fasting tips and tricks that we talk about here on this video. So today we're gonna talk about how to actually get into ketosis or what is the fastest way to get into ketosis when you're doing intermittent fasting or fasting. So let's go ahead and get started. So I first wanna share my personal experience when it comes to the fastest way of getting into ketosis, because it does vary from person to person. But roughly there is an estimate. I mean, roughly I would say it, if you're doing fasting, just fasting and jumping right into it, it is shown that it takes about 24 and it can even take up to 72 hours of fasting for people to get into ketosis. For me personally, uh, I've been measuring my ketone bodies when I do fasting, whether I decide to do a 24 or 36 hour water fast or 48 or three day or longer than that. So for me, I found, you know, sometimes I've gotten into ketosis as soon as 24 hours, sometimes even a little sooner when I check it, maybe about 20 hours. But also I've seen it where it takes me about 36 hours. And uh, even just recently, especially after the holidays, it took me about 48 hours before I actually got into ketosis of me just doing strict water fasting. So it really depends. Now, why can that be the case? Well, if you think about it, the body has to first get rid of all of its glycogen storage. Well, not all of it, but mostly it needs to get rid of all the glycogen storage that we store in our liver and our muscle tissue. So once it's depleted, then it finally does move over to the fat cells to break down those ketone bodies. So depend on how much glycogen you storage you have, how much weight you have, excess of weight. So it really depends, this is where it kind of varies. So a research study I actually want to talk about that kind of sheds a little bit more light when it comes to how long does it take to get in a ketosis state. This study actually looked at children that have to deal with epilepsy. And so they, most of them will put them on a ketogenic diet. So it looked at a comparison of fasting and people going on a ketogenic diet and what was the fastest way of getting into ketosis. And if you know anything about kids who actually in the past, back, I think this study was done back in, I think about 1998, somewhere around there. And back then they, or they probably might still do this, is they would first have the kids fast for about one or two days to get in a ketosis state before they started the ketogenic diet. So in this study, they decided, okay, is it really necessary to actually fast for one or two days to get into ketosis to start the ketogenic diet? So what they did is they took a, a group of kids that had epilepsy to get them started. So they just started them right on the ketogenic diet and see how long it took. And what they found on average, it actually was about roughly the same for both fasting and also be in the ketogenic diet. It was roughly about 17 to 48 hours. I know that's a big range, but it was roughly around there of 17 to 48 hours of putting in, getting in the ketosis state, whether it was fasting or whether it was putting just be on the ketogenic diet. So what does that mean? Does that mean that we shouldn't fast anymore and just do the keto diet because it's the fastest way to get into keto, or it's the same way to get into ketosis? No, not really. Uh, sure, it might be the same time frame, but as far as how many ketone bodies you're breaking down, you're gonna be breaking more ketone bodies during fasting in a faster pace than if you were on the keto diet. Now, doing a combination of two is great, and we're gonna talk about it here later in this video of what are some great ways to, the fastest ways to get into ketosis using something like keto and intermittent fasting. I'm gonna talk about that here in a minute. But, so what, which is better? Well, I wouldn't say one is better than the other, but if you wanna get, as far as breaking as many ketone bodies as fast, uh, breaking down the fat cells, fasting is gonna be fast because you're not still consuming fats like on the keto diet because when you're still consuming fats, it's still gonna utilize those fats. Whereas with fasting, well, frankly, you're not, the only fats that you have is your fat storage, so it's gonna break down that faster. So now I wanna kind of change gears here and talk about what are the different ways of getting into ketosis or the fastest ways to get into ketosis. So there is a couple of variations and I wanna talk about quite a few different points of how to do that. The first and the most obvious one is to just jump right in and do a 24 or 36 hour water fast or a dry fast. Either or uh, can get you really quickly into ketosis by just doing that. 
And again, it really does depend on the person because like I said before, depending how much glycogen storage you have built up. Now, if you've already been living on a more keto based diet or really on a very good healthy diet with more plant based and more healthier fats and kind of decreased on the carbs, you probably don't have as much glycogen storage so you can get into ketosis faster versus somebody that's might have had very high sugar diet and very high carb diet is going to take a little longer so just keep that in mind when you are starting to implement fasting or the ketogenic diet when you're trying to look for your ketone bodies and really getting frustrated of why i haven't seen them yet you're on your third fourth day now i know people who on the ketogenic diet sometimes it can take up to two weeks i know for me it took about roughly a week and a half before i started seeing ketones in my urine dipstick the other great tip that you could do with intermittent fasting to get into ketosis the fast way is actually do your exercise on an empty stomach. So doing it like first thing in the morning. So if you're planning on doing intermittent fasting, like let's say you're planning on doing the OMAD diet, the one meal a day, you because that'll be like what, roughly about a 20 hour window of fasting, maybe even more depending how you do your one meal a day. But if you fast in the morning or maybe even just later in the day, that's what I typically do when I'm doing a fast. I'll go for a run kind of at the tail end of my 24 or 36 hour water fast. But you could also do it right in the morning on an empty stomach because what that's gonna do, it's gonna deplete the glycogen storage faster because you're burning off that glycogen a lot faster versus if you're not exercising. So that's a great way to do that because then you're already really depleting it then you could start switching over breaking down your fat cells breaking down the ketone bodies so that's a great tip the other tip is focus when you are eating in between your fasting periods is focus more on a keto diet i mean it's obvious but even it doesn't necessarily have to be so extreme like you're know, trying to get your carbs down to 20 grams like i know i have to to get into a ketosis state but trying to just cut down the carbs increase the healthy fats in between your fasting periods so that when you do fasting, it's easy to get back in ketosis or at least stay into ketosis however long you decide to do ketogenic diet and also fasting. Other great tip is that you can actually start your breakfast before your fast, have a keto breakfast before you start to do the fast. So what I mean by that, if you are doing like one meal a day or trying to eat within a six hour window frame, that first meal before you start your intermittent fasting should be a keto breakfast. So something like maybe eggs or, you know, an avocado dip with some vegetables, something like that where you can start it nice and fresh and it kind of prolongs that. But along with that, if you are doing intermittent fasting or you're doing, you know, a 36 hour, 48 hour fast or a really prolonged fast, even breaking your fast, and I've talked about this all in my other videos, but also breaking it with more of a keto type of diet where it's more healthier fats, so that way you can kind of prolong the ketosis process. It's just makes it easier because if you are getting those symptoms and you really want to break your fast early on, just break it with more of a keto type of diet and that will prolong the ketosis period. And the other tip, if you are already doing the keto diet, what I recommend for people who are on the keto diet is, let's say you're thinking about doing the keto diet and you want to get started. You really want to get into ketosis really fast. What you can do is that, let's say you're on your second day of ketosis on the keto diet. You just started. What you can do either on the second day or the third day is do a water fast or a dry fast, whichever. I mean, obviously you gotta wanna be careful with dry fast. You wanna be a little more experienced faster, but you can do that and that will jump you right into ketosis really quick versus trying to wait a week, two weeks, I mean, sometimes up to three weeks to get into ketosis when you are on the ketogenic diet. And it just depends on the person. And like that study showed, now going back to that study, what is interesting, it was only on kids and epileptic kids. And so their probably glycogen storage is already depleted. Comparing it with maybe adults, especially adults that are overweight, obese, they're gonna, and that's a big, huge kind of comparison. So the hour frame, again, it's not accurate when it comes to adults, but that's why it is kind of a bigger range when it comes to getting into ketosis. But you can certainly on your second or third day while you're doing the ketogenic diet, do a fast for about 24, 36 hours. That'll get you right into ketosis. And then you just continue on with doing the ketogenic diet and staying in ketosis. The last final tip I'm gonna give is that you can start consuming MCT oil either when you've already are off your fast or if you're on a ketogenic diet, 
It is a great source of fat that the body actually utilizes really quickly and can help really utilize breaking down those ketone bodies. So that is it for today. Hope you guys liked this video. If you guys liked it, give us a big thumbs up and then go ahead, share with your family and friends. And then if you have any more questions on anything to do with fasting, we talk about fasting here on this channel. So go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. And if again, if this is your first time on our channel, go ahead and hit this button right over here to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other future videos. And also leave some other links over here that you can check out of our other fasting videos. Until next time, I love you guys. As always, this is Dr. Grand signing out.